Howdy, my name is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be taking a look at how Side Game LLC gets rid of their games. So, as you can see, I've got a long list here of previously owned games, and these all came from the Side Game library. They might be games that I don't deem are good enough to be in the library, they might be games that I've gotten updated versions of them, or they might be games that just weren't a good fit for the library. So, kind of lots of reasons why they, sh they left the library, but the big thing here is you need to get rid of them, because there are constantly new games coming out, so how do we get rid of them? So the biggest way that I get rid of games is through the Facebook Marketplace. So this is a very local thing, and the reason that I use the Marketplace more than anything else is you are able to get rid of things without dealing with shipping. And shipping can be a killer when it comes to the board game industry and selling things. A lot of the times your products are going to be very heavy because they're filled with components and pieces. So if you can eliminate the shipping, the ability to sell things is actually something that I kind of look forward to is getting rid of these things and having local pickups and local drop-offs. It's really something that is very manageable and very doable. You don't have to calculate shipping prices and you can really give somebody a good deal on a game. So I think the Facebook Marketplace's interface is great. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at one of my current listings. So as you can see here, you've got um, the listing itself. You can put lots of different pictures on it. You can explain exactly what it is you're selling, the conditions of the games, and really give specific details. So in this one in particular, I'm getting rid of a couple of things, as well as lots of promos. So I have lots of different things for people to pick and choose from. So I really like the interface of the Marketplace, and Marketplace has a really cool feature where you can actually link it to different groups. So there's the general Colorado Marketplace that hits everybody, but there's also smaller groups like the Colorado Springs, uh, I think it's called the Board Game Exchange Group. That's one that I use a lot, and you can simply link your marketplace posts there and everyone will be able to see it. So I really like the interface of Facebook Marketplace and my biggest tip for actually getting people to notice and buy your games is have the prices dramatically low. So a lot of times people can buy things at a significant discount when it comes to standard mass market games so you need to make sure that yours stands out and the best way to do this is to dramatically decrease the price. Uh, as you as you saw there, I was only down to six games and some promos. Uh, out of those 66, I've had no problem getting rid of these things. Now, the biggest deal is that decreased price. So if you do this local pickup, there's no shipping cost. So you can really take a hit on the price, which is great. You're going to get it gone. It's somebody's going to pick it up, and it's going to get moving. And somebody's going to be able to play it, and they're going to enjoy it. So that's my biggest uh, advice is decrease the price dramatically. So if you have a $40 game, I'd bring it down to somewhere like 20 or 25. I'm sure you've got your time with it, but the sooner it moves on, the better, the more space you can make for new stuff. Now, sometimes people just aren't interested in the specific games that you're selling. And that might not be because the game is bad, but it might be because maybe somebody's not looking at the marketplace. It might not hit that specific crowd. Maybe you're trying to get somebody that's more into the hobby, something specific. Now, one game in particular that I had was Hippocamus, and that was one that was a little hard to sell. It was the all-in collection, had everything in it. It was a hard pickup. It was pretty expensive. But when it comes to large games like this, I tend to go to a local game store. So, and the one that I visit often is Petrie's Family Games, but um, this is one that I will always, if I have a large amount of things that I'm having trouble moving, I'll bring them to Petrie's and they'll give me a pretty fair price that I can either use in-store credit to move uh, when new games come in, or I can just send it straight into cash if I want to uh, support something else, uh, another store. Or maybe they don't have product that I need right now, or maybe I have everything. So you can really pick and choose how you are going to use the money. Obviously, the store credit's better, and then you can help support your local businesses. But if you need that cash right now, maybe I need to put it towards a Kickstarter or something like that, then you can do it that way. So um, I would check around your local game stores, see which ones do do this kind of buy um, opportunity. And I would, I would go for it. I think it's a great option to do it. And my biggest thing here is, once again, don't get hung up on value. You are trying to get rid of these games, right? You're trying to sell them off so you can make room for new ones. You are going to get some sort of monetary value out of your games. But the big thing is you got a chance to play them, and now you, somebody else will get a chance to play them. So they're never just going to be sitting there doing nothing. Now, when this 
isn't your option though because sometimes you have a game that you know is worth a lot uh, it's worth a lot of money you know it's worth a lot of money and you just need to figure out a way to sell this now this is the time when i will go to the internet and i will kind of uh, fuss with shipping and whatnot um, i don't use board game geek very often um, but i do use reddit so Reddit is the big one that I use, specifically the products that I move a lot that are pretty high end are the Kingdom Death Monster Miniatures. So um, I'm back, I've backed one of the larger tier levels that gets a lot of the supplemental models in that do not add gameplay content. And so that's, this is one of the, one of the items that I regularly will sell on this secondhand market of the Reddit for Kingdom Death. So a lot of the times I will post and once again, in order to get somebody to purchase your product, I generally will set my items to whatever the value of the item was when I picked it up or whatever it is currently now that you can buy on the web store. So I don't try to uh, get a huge profit on here. I try to get whatever the, the running rate is as mentioned on the Kingdom Death shop. So I'm never trying to scalp. I'm always trying to be as fair as possible because if you do that, you're generally going to get picked up pretty quickly. And that's the most important thing to me is to make sure that this is getting moved into somebody's hands. So I use the Reddit for Kingdom Death for this. And there's also, I think it's called um, r slash board game exchange. It has a similar thing with larger Kickstarter games. You can use that as well. So I would recommend reddit for those large purchases you can kind of hit anybody anywhere and these are kind of the more hardcore people that are focused on a specific game and are willing to dish out the money that it's your product is actually worth so i think this is a very useful tool the last thing that i use to get rid of games is actually for specifically uh, singles for competitive card games and these are going to be through cool stuff inc I use their buy lists, and this is specifically for games like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic. If I ever come into any cards or anything like that that I know that I can spin for some value, I will go to uh, Cool Stuff Inc. And they have a great system here where you will send them a box in the mail. Usually I just slide it into a deck box and put it in a package and then send it off. And it's not something I have to worry about. Generally, they'll give you a lot of store credit if you decide to do the store credit option. Or you can, once again, just like at the local game store, you can have it as a PayPal deposit. And it'll go straight into your account. And you can use that to back your next Kickstarter game. So I really like the, the ease of this. We'll just go ahead and take a look here. You can take a look by name. You can specifically search by set. So you can pick what card game you're looking for. I just did a big Pokemon one recently. And you can kind of pick and choose how you're gonna view the list. So this is really useful if you have a lot of, a lot of incoming Pokemon cards. They price everything. Um, doesn't matter the rarity. They have every single rarity here priced very efficiently, very fairly. You can type in the amount here. And it's a great tool, in my opinion. You're going to make sure that your cards are as in good condition as possible. But even if your cards aren't the best condition, they'll still take them, which I think is super useful. Um, once again, if you're just trying to offload these things, I think it's a very useful tool. And I hope that some of you found this useful. So that's my; those are my big tips on moving games out of the library to bring new ones in. And I think that they're just useful tips in general. So obviously it's not going to be applicable to everyone because this is specific for the Colorado area and what I do. But I hope that you can take some of these ideas and apply them to your own area. Do you have a local game store that you can go to that accepts games like this? Do you have an active Facebook marketplace? And do you have a group in Reddit that you know you can rely on to sell your goods? So kind of keep these questions in your mind. If you have any questions for me or comments on what I talked about here, please leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, I hope some of you found this useful. Um, thanks so much. Have a great one. Side Game Strong.